Welcome to another episode of Eric Witt Whiskey Studies. And in this video, I'm going to answer the question, is the Ardbeg Dark Cove worth $400 or more? Uh, when it came out back in 2016, it sold for about $150. I was able to pick up two bottles. Since then, it has become one of the most raved about and sought after uh, releases from our Beg Distillery. So I'm gonna answer five questions as to whether or not you should spend that extra money that it is now going for on uh, the secondary market and where it is still available in retail stores. First, are you an Ardbeg fan? So if you like peated whiskeys, but you're not necessarily a huge Ardbeg devotee, then maybe it's not worth it to you. If you're a real big fan of a particular rock band, you're probably gonna be willing to spend more money to see them live than someone who just sort of likes them. If you're a big fan of a particular uh, football team and they're in the Super Bowl, you may be willing to spend a lot of money to go see your favorite team on uh, uh, live uh, at the Super Bowl. But if you just like football in general or your team isn't going to the Super Bowl, then maybe you wouldn't be willing to spend that kind of money. Well, it's the same thing when you're spending sort of extra dollars, uh, more than su suggested uh, manufactured resale price, you know, <laughs> the original release cost for a whiskey. So uh, if you are a major Ardbeg fan, or you've, ju you've just become one perhaps, and you haven't had the Ardbeg Dark Cove, then maybe you'd be willing, as I would, to spend around $400. The second issue is, are you looking for a special occasion whiskey? So I've been into wine for 20 years, been into whiskey but for about four years, and I've got a large collection of uh, wines. Uh, that are pretty pricey, you know, $200 and up, all the way up to $1,000. But they're not wines that I'm going to pull a cork on every day to have with dinner, right? My everyday type wines are going to be closer to $20, $30. And probably the same for a lot of whiskeys. You're going to spend less for $100 for your, say, everyday drinkers. However, there are wines or whiskeys that you're going to want to buy for this special occasion. Maybe it's your birthday, a wedding anniversary, a graduation, something like that. In which case, you know what? Normally you wouldn't spend that kind of money, but you're looking for something special, or maybe it's a gift for somebody else, uh, for someone's a wedding or whatever, then maybe you're willing to go the extra effort. You want to give them that extra something special, then definitely Ardbeg Dark Cove is gonna be that bottle. So yeah, I would spend $400 if I was looking to get it as a special gift for someone else or for a special occasion for me. The third issue is, can you afford it? Now, that may seem kind of obvious, because if you can't afford it, don't spend the money. You shouldn't be going into hockey. You shouldn't be going into debt in order to uh, chase a bottle of whiskey. There are things in life that are more important than whiskey. You know, like uh, food for your kids, diapers for the newborn baby, maybe getting that uh, roof fixed or that uh, repair uh, on your automobile, right? Or just somehow, uh, some other way, uh, keeping your wife or significant other happy, right? But if you can afford it, if you can put the shell out the money, it's not gonna break your bank, then I would say absolutely, if you can find one of these for 400 bucks, yeah, I know these went for 130 to 150 or so when they were first released, but now you're just not gonna find it. And if you haven't had one, I would say, yeah, go ahead and spend the money I got two of these for $150. I've got now got mm, about a bottle and a third left. If I can get my hands on another one, I definitely will because this has been one of the best art bags I've ever had. So if you have the cash, if you get the moolah laying around, then go ahead and pull the trigger and get it while you can at only $400. The fourth issue is, are you looking for a long-term investment? Now, that may sound crazy. You say, wait a minute, $400? Are you kidding me? That's an investment in a whiskey? The reality is, highly sought after whiskeys are always gonna increase in price in time. The more of them that are consumed, the less there are. S supply and demand, it means the price is gonna go up. In fact, while if you search around the internet, you're seeing these four to five hundred dollars. Uh, there's actually a shop that I came across that has them available for six 
hundred dollars. Now that's the highest I've seen thus far, but that means if I bought one for four hundred dollars, another one, another bottle for four hundred dollars. It's probably going to head in that direction in terms of the value. And we know there are a lot of other whiskeys out there that are selling for far more, over $1,000 to a real collector. So if you have the money, if you have the patience and the self-discipline not to pull the cork and you're looking for something to invest in in the long term, then yeah, go ahead and buy a bottle. Now, some people sort of frown on bottle flippers. Hey, you're hoarding all these whiskeys that we would like to be able to be drinking. The reality is some of us can only get those older bottles because somebody bought them and stored them away. When you're buying a bottle that has been uh, sat on, stored for a long period of time, and you're paying that extra money, you're paying that person for their time and essentially paying a storage fee because they've been holding it for you. And if people weren't buying and not drinking and they were storing uh, these whiskeys from uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 years or, or, or more ago, they wouldn't be available for us today to enjoy them. So I don't have a pro I'm not into flipping bottles. But I don't have a problem with it because essentially uh, they are making bottles available to people in the future who can't get them now. The fifth issue is the uh, most obvious one is Ardbeg Dark Cove that good. I've been into whiskey for about four years, become a big fan of Ardbeg. It's sort of my team, so to speak. I've been building up my collection and I tend to go back, I'm, I'm intending to go back in time and find some of those previous generation bottles that I'm seeing three, four hundred dollars and up. Uh, just at least try them to get a better historical understanding of the whiskeys. If you're an Ardbeg fan, then one of the most important things is to sort of understand the character of Ardbeg and what is the best that they can produce. Ardbeg Dark Cove committee release thus far for many people, including fellow whiskey tubers, has sort of become the standard, the barometer by which all other Ardbegs are being judged. When the Ardbeg Black came out in 2020, what we were all hoping is, is this going to be like Ardbeg Dark Cove committee release? Is it going to be that good? And so we're looking for it, we're on the hunt for it, we're willing to shout out some money for it because we're looking for something that's as good as this one because we're going to hope lightning strikes again. So uh, in short, is it that good? Absolutely. So I'm going to do a re-review on this one. This bottle is about right here on the label, so it's had some time to open up. But before we get into this, here are my notes on this whiskey. Dark Cove Bottling is a special release for Ardbeg Committee members, followed by a lower ABV bottling coming out later on Ardbeg Day, May 28, 2016. The Ardbeg Dark Cove was aged in ex-bourbon cast and dark sherry cast, an extremely rare version of the fortified wine master blender Bill Lenemanson found in his travels. It is non-show filtered with no added coloring, bottled at 55% alcohol by volume, and prices currently range from $400 to $600 in the United States. Alrighty, so in comparison to a lot of the Ardbegs, it is darker. If you look at the Ardbeg 10, it's a little bit more of a lime green color, a little bit of a yellow, it's a little bit of lemon and lime color. This one has got a slight copper and uh, bronze to it on the nose. Really, 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 really rich. The peat has now become much more subdued and integrated into the whiskey since the last time I've had it. Really dark black fruits, plum, raisin, uh, chocolate covered raisins like goobers, black currants, chocolate, caramels, loads of vanilla. And everything's really, really interwoven with the smoke and peat. Slight saltiness. Hint of brininess on the palate. Mmm. Wow. It's been a while since I've had a glass. And you kind of forget just how good it is. It's a little sweet. 
silky smooth. Everything that I just told you on the nose is on the palate. Integrated chocolate, dark black fruits, caramels, vanilla. It's all about chocolate pudding mixed in with some salted chocolates, caramels, a little bit of spice. It is really, really, really rich. Guys, a nice development, a real long finish. This is absolutely spectacular. Uh, I reviewed this before. That review is no longer on my channel because uh, I wanted to do a re-review of it. I think I originally gave it around 95 points. As it is now, I'm going to go 98 points, 98 points. This is absolutely spectacular. Whiskeys, you know, they open up and they develop more as exposed a little bit uh, to, to the air. So it's well past the shoulder. It is opened up and developed really, really nice. Now that I've got about right there, I might have to get together with some friends and kill this bottle. Uh, but we'll see how, how that goes. Uh, because, or I might have to separate it into smaller bottles. I don't want it to get over oxidized, but right now it's absolutely spectacular. Mmm. Wow. Alrighty. So if I can find another bottle for 400 or less, I'm gonna jump on it. I am gonna buy another bottle. Now I know a lot of people out there can't necessarily spend that kind of cash, and I sympathize with you, and I totally understand that, but that's what friends are for, is to share whiskeys. So uh, perhaps uh, we'll meet up sometime and uh, we'll share a dram of the Art Big Dark Cove. But until then, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do and uh, give this a video a thumbs up. And if you've had the Dark Cove, I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. Put it in the comment down below. If you have any questions, let me know. And until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.